Okay. So the next agency is. Hello. I'm Scott Downey, and I'm with uh, EPA out of the regional office in Seattle, and I manage the pesticide program. And so Region 10 is where um, I'm from, and we actually work with four different states, Alaska, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon, mm -hmm. and the Indian country um, sovereign nations in those four states. Uh, so I'm going to give you just a real quick 101 about EPA and pesticides, and kind of there's two different levels. There's the national pesticide program, and there's a regional program that, that uh, I work in. Uh, nationally, there's actually hundreds of people back in Arlington, Virginia, in the Office of Pesticide Programs that work just on pesticides. A lot of scientists that do risk assessments for human health exposures, for environmental uh, effects, and uh, some of these, if it's a new product coming down the market, it can take years to go through that process. There's a lot of information that's looked at. And all that's taken into account when a label is written and put on that product. And we have a, a saying in a pesticide program that the label is a law. So if you, you know, we're saying, um, hopefully, if you're following the label, that you're, there shouldn't be an unreasonable adverse effect using that product. But um, like about everything, not, we don't always get it right. Sometimes there's unintended consequences. There's new information that comes in on these products. So we have uh, a re-evaluation re process. So that can mean a, a pesticide every 15 years gets reviewed. New information is looked at. Uh, incidents are looked at of exposures. Uh, uh, so information like we're hearing today, information that might come out of the uh, exposure investigation will be fed back uh, to the national level to be looked at whether these labels that are put on the products are protective enough. So that's kind of the national program. At the regional level, we do lots of things. We A lot of, a lot of our programs work with, very closely with our states, including the pesticides program. We have uh, funding we give the state pesticide program, Oregon Department of Agriculture, we work with them not just on, uh, 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 for example, enforcement programs, they have inspections they do for us, but also a water quality program, a, a major species program, or a safety program, so we kind of work with them on all that. We also work with communities directly um, occasionally, as you see tonight. Um, I brought some colleagues with me, I'd like to introduce them. Uh, we actually have some people that work, actually live and work in, in communities. So Alan Henning, if you could uh, wave your hand here. He actually works in Eugene and does a lot of water quality work. Uh, works with watershed councils and uh, state uh, environmental uh, agencies. Uh, we have uh, technical people also in our office. And I, we have Elizabeth Allen here from our Office of Environmental, environmental Assessment. And she's a human toxicologist that's helping us on this project. And like I said, we work with communities. We have a community involvement specialist. Kay, where are you? Kay Morrison? Where she go? She's out. She's been out there greeting people, so she's probably back there. There's Kate. Okay. So we brought a whole team with us tonight, and uh, we're all working on this issue, and, and glad that you're here. And I'll be here throughout to answer any questions you have. Thanks, Scott. You're going to get to hand that off. Just yeah, Richard, and there okay, are a couple actually, more empty chairs. If any of you back there want an empty chair, there's two or three that I can see right up here. Hang on. Uh, so, okay. So next up is uh, Dale with the uh, Department of Ag. Good evening, my name is Dale Mitchell. I'm the Assistant Administrator in the Pesticides Division. Um, our mission, I'm going to have to put my eyes on for this one. Our mission is to protect people and the environment from any adverse health of pesticides while maintaining the availability for beneficial uses and to assure that fertilizer products are used appropriately. Pesticides Division, we have many programs. We are the state lead agency that is delegated uh, for enforcement uh, of the pesticide control law here in Oregon. Our programs are compliance monitoring, licensing and certification, water quality, endangered species. We have staff located uh, throughout the state uh, to address pesticide related problems and, and issues. Uh, we register pesticide products for sales, distribution, and use. We register uh, just over 13,000 products that are, are used uh, throughout the state. Uh, and again, we do compliance monitoring. We follow up on complaints or allegations of concerns of adverse health or environmental harm or damage. Uh, I do also wear two hats. As Jay had mentioned, I am the co-chair of the Pesticide Analytical Response Network. Thanks, yeah. uh, Okay. I'm going to get to use my handy dandy. Okay. Forestry. Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Doherty. I'm with the Oregon Department of Forestry. 
Uh, we have a number of missions, and I'm only going to talk about the private forest program mission associated with the Forest Practices Act. And our mission is to ensure or encourage economically efficient forest practices to ensure the continuous growing and harvesting of trees as a leading use on forest land. And that's done consistent with the sound management of air, soil, water, wildlife species, and special scenic resources. Um, the Board of Forestry has exclusive authority for regulating all forest practices on forest land, and that's how we get involved in pesticide regulation. Uh, all forest practices and forest applications of pesticides have to follow EPA laws. <clears throat> they have to follow ODA and the Oregon pesticide laws. And then in addition, they have to follow some Board of Forestry laws that are designed to ensure protection of riparian areas, to ensure protection of water quality, and to ensure protection of special resources. And so that's how I fit in, and then we're a member of the park, and we're supporting this investigation because we're the agency that knows where there are harvest units, what activities are going, where there are sprays. So that's kind of our role in here, is supporting uh, the information about what's going on on the forested landscape. So I'll see if I can do this without a microphone. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, well, I'm Greg Pettit. I'm uh, the administrator of the DEQ uh, uh, Laboratory and Environmental Assessment Division. And the mission of our agency is to protect Oregon's air, land, and water. Included in that mission is protecting Oregonians from toxics. Uh, so the, one of the programs that we operate out of the Laboratory Environmental Assessment Division is our monitoring programs. We monitor air quality and water quality throughout the state. Uh, pesticides are included in some of the uh, monitoring and uh, assessment projects we do. We do monitoring of groundwater in some areas of the state, and we include pesticides in some of that groundwater monitoring. And also certain areas of the state, usually in agricultural areas, we include some pesticides in our water quality monitoring programs. Our role in this human exposure assessment will be to conduct the analytical analysis for pesticides on the drinking water samples that are going to be collected. Thanks, Greg. And last but not least, our friends and yours, ATSDR. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Kaufman, and I'm a United States Public Health Service officer assigned to the Center for Disease Control and the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. My office is in Seattle, and like Scott, uh, I oversee work in the four state area here in Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. And as a part of um, our work and supporting our mission, which is to reduce or prevent adverse health impacts in humans from exposure to chemicals in the environment, we provide uh, money to each of the four state health departments in the region to support us in doing that work. And some of our money does go to the Oregon Health Authority and the support of the staff that, that Jay oversees. Um, our role in this is, um, at the request of EPA, doing some of their investigations, they heard a lot of concerns about health impacts in the community here, and asked ATSDR to get involved to assist in addressing those concerns. And so this has evolved into, for us, um, providing some money, some staff, some laboratory analysis services to do some human biological monitoring, in this case specifically urine collection analysis as a part of the proposed exposure investigation. Thanks, Richard. I think you can turn that mic off. Thanks. So, that's who's here in the room with you. And I do apologize because I, in my haste to get going, um, and Scott, you showed me up for my bad manners. I didn't introduce my staff to you. So I'm going to ask them to stand up one by one. Dr. Dave Ferrer is sitting there in uh, blue. Dave is a toxicologist uh, with the Environmental Health Assessment Program. Sujata Joshi is to my left. Sujata is another environmental epidemiologist with the Environmental Health Assessment Program. And Karen Bishop uh, is playing Vanna here tonight. Uh, Karen is a health educator with the Environmental Health Assessment Program, and she works uh, kind of like with Kay, uh, helping to make sure that we have good communication with the communities that we're working with. So Karen is going to be taking some notes tonight, uh, most especially when we get to the, the question and answer period, which uh, is going to be in just a little, a little bit. 